Hey guys, this is Full Gaming Instincts here, and welcome to Tutorial 7 on how to create a zombie first person shooter game in Unity. So, first off, if you're new to my series, I recommend you go and view my previous tutorials and then come to this one so you'll have a better understanding of what's going on and how we've arrived at this point in our game, and you'll also be more organized in creating your game. Alright, good stuff. Now, if you are following my series as far, well, you'll know that today I'll be showing you guys how we can add some game objects to our uh, scene to enhance our game's outlook. Alright, so yeah, I'll be showing you guys that. As you can see in my scene view right now, I actually have a uh, church model here with a fence. Alright, and over here I have like an old destroyed house. You know, it's just fallen to pieces. Yeah, so that's some good stuff. I'll show you guys how you can add that. It's very, very simple. And just remember also, uh, you can check out the Unity Asset Store. You can get some free assets there, or you can buy some assets to, you know, enhance your game's outlook, you know. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. So, let's get down to this tutorial today. Uh, you'll need to check for the link in the description below and download the package and import it into your project. Uh, good stuff. After you finish, you'll have this to uh, folder here, tutorial 7. Within the folder, all the game objects. Uh, in which I use for my scene to enhance the uh, outlook you know right now it looks a bit more game like you know yeah I just enable the directional light so you guys can see what's going on alright that's some good stuff now it's very simple all we need to do if you want to add this stuff uh, just go open up the folder abandoned church and just go to prefab just take the prefab of the old church and just drag it in there and there it is we have a church in our game you can, you can just position this wherever you want, you can rotate it, excuse me, scale it and so forth to your liking. It's all up to you, so yeah. And you can do the same thing as well for the old house. Uh, go to the prefab folder, you just take it and drag it into your scene. Yeah, that's pretty much that. Just remember to drag it into your scene and not your game, because if you try dragging it into your game, it won't work. And I have this zero with a slash. Drag it into your scene, it'll work. Good stuff. Now, the... Uh, stone fence now this is very interesting I got this uh, model from the unity asset store however uh, there wasn't an actual prefab of the comp the fence in complete form however uh, as you can see there's just the uh, three types of posts here and wall so I've uh, made a prefab of the entire uh, fence completed you know and I, you can just take it and drag it in there. Uh, it'll save you guys some ample time, you know, rather than just going and position all this stuff and scaling it and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So you guys can use it if you want to, or you can just make your own fence. It's all up to you. Good stuff. So yeah, let's get down to uh, the main aspect of uh, this tutorial. I'm gonna show you guys how you can add colliders to your game object. Colliders are very important. Now. Colliders is uh, a collider uh, is basically a component in which we attach to a game object so as to avoid a player from passing through the game object, all right, or the enemy pass through the game object. As you may see in games, uh, when you shoot a wall, let's say we shoot a rocket, for example, because that's a prefab, uh, the rocket doesn't necessarily pass through the wall. It collides with the wall, and it basically gives off a certain particle effect, which it, which is an explosion, all right? Now, it's the same scenario here. Now, if we hit play, you'll notice that uh, the player would be able to walk through the actual church all right that's basically because the church has no collider attached to it all right now the reason the player won't be able to walk through the fence is basically because the fence has a collider so i'll just show you guys in the inspector uh, the fence all right see like the fence as you can see it has a box collider now a box collider you can basically use a box collider for things like this you know like the fence and so forth because necessarily you don't necessarily need to walk through the fence all right but in this case we'll need to enter the church so if we add a box collider to the church uh, we won't be able to go through uh, walk through here and you know enter the church because uh, it'll have an invisible wall avoiding us from doing so because uh, basically it's just a box from one end to the next end and the uh, from top to bottom as well uh, added to the game object so you won't be able to go inside of the church so for things like 
I would actually use the mesh collider, uh, that's another collider, for things like the church and so forth, uh, stuff in which uh, your player needs to enter into a building and stuff like that. Yeah, you can actually use like a mesh collider instead of a box collider. Box collider, you basically use the, that for like things you don't necessarily need to walk true you know or you don't need to enter you know yeah so just keep that uh much in mind that's some good stuff now we'll just uh select the old church and we'll just open it up and we'll just select the first thing within here and let me just explain everything uh this this stuff in here now each and every one of these uh objects here these components is basically a part of the church all right if I disable this, you'll notice in a scene in our scene view something just disappeared there. Those bells disappeared. That's basically because it's a game object. Uh, a part. It's a part of the church. All right. Now this is basically an empty game object that we made and we just uh, parented everything to this one game object. So just keep that in mind. So what you'll need to do is select the first one, then select the last. All right. Just select the first one, then hold shift. And then select the last one, and everything will be selected at once. That's uh, a, a way you can actually uh, save ample time, you know. Good stuff. So we'll just go to our inspector now, and you'll just add, uh, hit our add component, we'll go to physics, and we'll add the mesh collider. And you'll notice that we'll be able to go into the church, and we won't encounter any sort of problems other than this step. We can't go up the stair, but we'll be able to go into the church. And we'll be able to, you know, not walk through these actual game objects and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, that's some stuff. Now, the reason why we're unable to um, go up the actual step. Okay, the player went up the step. That's alright. I think it's my move speed that increased. So, yeah, alright. As you can see there, he's stuck. Alright, the player can't really go up the stairs. Now, that's going to be a bit of a problem for you guys. I'll just show you guys a quick method on uh, which you can actually use to actually uh, help in that area. Now, we'll just uh, deselect everything in our hierarchy, you know. Good. And we'll just right click and we'll go down to 3D object and we'll just add a cube in there. Good stuff. And we'll just put this cube to the center. Alright. And what we'll do, we'll just uh, drag it close to the steps all right we just want it to be at the we want it to be close to the uh, first staircase all right we'll just drag this up good stuff now what we're gonna do we're gonna scale this on the z-axis all right just scale this out on the z-axis that's some good stuff I'll just bring this over here because what we basically want is for the uh, cube to be close to the this edge all right you don't scale it out on this one here good stuff and what we'll do now we'll just scale out here you guys can set it up to your liking I'm just going to show you guys a, a quick way in which we can actually use to uh, go up the steps without any sort of casualty or anything stopping us good stuff so yeah that's pretty much that all we need to do now is just drop this down and we'll just drag it there and that's some good stuff now you'll notice that if we hit play and so on and we're gonna be able to walk up alright however this is there's an actual white plane let me just hit play and you guys can see what's going on there's a sort of white plane alright and I think we'll need to actually we'll need to carry this down a bit more alright so we can go into the ground so we'll need to scale this here on the x-axis, x-position, alright. And we'll just drag this down. Good stuff. Yeah, that's some good stuff there, good. And now all we need to do is just go to our inspector and disable the mesh renderer. And as you can see, the actual uh, game object just disappeared. So now we can actually walk up the steps. Yeah, so you guys can apply the same method to these steps here, you know, and uh, these two steps on the next side, you know, and the other steps around in the church. So yeah, you guys can apply that method and everything will work out just fine. Now, uh, 
yeah that's uh, pretty much that there's some other colliders if we just check out here there's some other colliders I'll explain these other colliders as we progress with our series so that's some good stuff but these two colliders the box collider and mesh collider are the two most used colliders that you guys may use to create your game so just keep that in mind so yeah guys uh, that's pretty much that uh, you can apply the same method for the uh, old house as well you select the first one, hold shift, select the last one, add component, go to physics, and then we'll add a mesh collider. Everything works out just fine. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much that. So yeah, uh, hope you like this tutorial, uh, guys. If you do, you can give me a thumbs up. Uh, do remember to subscribe, keep yourself up to date with my channel. And in the next tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how you can actually add a simple pause menu to your game, you know. So you can pause your game and then start resume back from where you left off. All right. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, and also the mouse with the pause menu, your mouse is gonna be not gonna be displayed on your screen. So yeah, it, it has its benefits. So yeah, that's pretty much that. So once again, guys, I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, if you do, you can give me a thumbs up. Do remember to subscribe. Keep yourself up to date with my tutorial series on how to create a zombie first versus shooter game in unity so until next time continue making games guys and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial peace